If you're not a fan of the words, peak fiction, goat, raw, fire, click off of the video. Because those are going to come up like 50 times in here, man. I can't help it. The weights are off. On some Rock Lee stuff, the weights are off. I took them all, I threw them into, into that. Sonic the Hedgehog 2006 is better than you think. Unless you think it's a perfect game, in which case, it's not. Throughout this video, I'm going to dive into everything I love about the game and tell you why it's better than you remember. But remember, you are allowed to disagree. These are just my opinions, so I ask you to respect them, and I will do the same for yours. So then, let's start with the story. Ah ha ha! Ah, that's hot! That's hot! Right out of the bat, it's the story perfect? No, absolutely not. But it definitely doesn't deserve all the hate it gets. The story begins with Dr. Eggman kidnapping Elise in the hopes of harnessing the Flames of Disaster, which is a destructive power which has been locked within her. Sonic works alongside Tails and Knuckles to free Elise and protect her from Eggman, even though she gets kidnapped like another 50 times, but whatever. Meanwhile, Shadow Rouge and Eggman accidentally release the evil Mephilis the Dark. Watch out for Mephilis the Dark. Mephilis? Mephilis? From this purple statue thing. Mephilis? Then transports them forward through time to the post-apocalyptic city, Crisis City which was destroyed by Iblis. When Mephilis meets Silver and Blaze, who are survivors of the attack, he tricks them into thinking Sonic is the cause of the destruction and sends them to the past, well, present, to kill him. Throughout the story of 06, Sonic and Co. travel between the past, present, and future, like Sonic CD, but less bad, in their efforts to stop Mephilis and Iblis destroying the world and to protect Elise from Dr. Eggman. Silver tries to stop Sonic from reaching Elise, with fears he'll release the flames of disaster from her. But actually, it's Shadow that reveals to Silver that Sonic is not the cause of the world destruction. It's Mephilis, who's trying to change the past to stop Sonic and seal the fate of the world. They travel ten years into the past and learn that Mephilis seeks to bond with Iblis, who was sealed within Elise as a child. That's what the flames of disasters are. Mephilis wants to bond with Iblis as they make up two half of Soliana's all-powerful god, Solaris, and destroy time, and like to just destroy everything. Anything you think of, they just want to destroy it. Mephilis eventually succeeds after killing Sonic, which makes Elise cry over his death, which releases the seal on Iblis, and allows Mephilis to bond with Iblis to form Solaris, who then attempts to consume all of time itself. The heroes use the power of the Chaos Emeralds and a little smoochy smooch to revive Sonic. The three hedgehogs then transform into their super forms. and work together across time to defeat Solaris. Sonic and Elise are then brought back to the past to extinguish Solaris's flames, removing the god from existence and preventing the events of the game from ever occurring. Despite this, Sonic and Elise show faint signs of recalling their encounter afterwards, and the game ends there. You can say it, bro, like, do 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 I mean, yo, uh, fire! <laughs> no, what are you saying, bro? Like, yo, this is peak! This is peak. There's nothing that can be done here that can be improved on. This is peak! <laughs> so overall, what do I think of the story? Well, as I said, it's far from perfect. That's just a summary of the key events, but I completely missed how Elise is captured by Eggman like three or four times. I'm not one of those people who hates the relationship between Sonic and Elise. It's actually done quite naturally through the game, and yeah, if you had someone who saved you from death multiple times, you're going to feel attachment to them, and when they get killed, in front of you, you're going to be sad. Sure, maybe it's a little weird a human in a hedgehog falling in love, but I don't see how it's any different from something like Beauty of the Beast, except Sonic is hot. It's one of those things where I can see it from both angles, but I think the sheer mass of hate their relationship gets is completely unjustified. You can like it, you can dislike it, but don't go after the people that like it. 
and likewise don't go after the people that dislike it. As well as this, I do feel that the plot can drag sometimes. You play through three different campaigns, each told by the perspective of either Sonic, Shadow or Solar, depending on the campaign you're playing, and yeah, it can get repetitive seeing some of the same cutscenes multiple times on different story, but it helped to cement those key moments in the story so you're more likely to remember them. Would I put the story up there with the likes of Black Knight and Unleashed and Secret Rings and Adventure 1? No. Maybe not even up there with Frontiers, but I'd put it above Sonic Adventure 2, which I, I know that's a hot take, but if I talk about my feelings on Sonic Adventure 2, we'll be here all day. But, you know, it's better than anything to come out of the classic era, and it's leagues above any meta-era story. It's not perfect, but it's far from bad. Now, let's get to the meat and potatoes, the juicy stuff, the gameplay. I'm gonna say this from the get-go, strap yourselves in, fasten your seatbelts because I'm about to say something crazy. The gameplay of Sonic 06 is... one of the best. For Sonic especially. So, let's talk about him. I've got to hurry and save Elise! Sonic is, well, Sonic. He can do all his normal stuff. Run, jump, homing attack, bounce, slide, light dash. The thing I see people complaining most about with the gameplay of 06, aside from it's a broken buggy, a playable mess, which we'll get onto in a bit, it's the controls. And yeah, to some extent I agree. Sonic does move a little slow. That is to the extent in which I agree. I'll get on to talking about the bugs later on, but aside from the speed being a little slow, I really don't have any issue with the control. It's tight, it's responsive, but not to the stupid degrees that something like Sonic Heroes where you just go flying off the edge of whatever. It feels much more like the adventure controls than Heroes does, it just feels like the adventure controls but slower. And that's not a completely bad thing, Sonic 06 is more of a focus on combat and platforming than the previous games did. Except maybe heroes, but again, I don't know if you wanna. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not playing that garbage fire. Okay. <laughs> the level design in Sonic stages, especially, are absolutely top notch. They're wide. They're open. There's a plethora of alternate pathways in most of the stages. The only one that immediately comes to mind in lacking in this degree is Aquatic Base. But even then, I feel far more freedom in Aquatic Base than I do in most of the time in Sonic Adventure 2, or Sonic Heroes. It's hard to talk about what it is that makes them so good, but I remember I made a video ages ago where I said that 06 has a flow to it, a beat, a rhythm, and I stand by that point. It honestly feels like a rhythm game at times, and that just adds to how the game feels to play in my opinion. The set pieces and gimmicks in this game are fantastic. From the Sonic Adventure Orca returning to the Eagles in Kingdom Valley, those divine things, the train chase, literally all of Crisis City, but namely, the that tornado's, tornado's carrying a car! Sure, the automation can get a little heavy in places, but name me a Sonic game that doesn't have perhaps just a teensy bit too much automation. You can't. And if that wasn't enough, every couple of stages the level will end with a mark speed section. These are areas where you can't stop, you're going faster than ever before and Sonic is absolutely zooming through the stage. Touching anything will cause you to lose rings, make it to the end, and survive. Honestly, I'd be lying if I said I didn't like these. They're so fast paced, each movement needs to be perfect or you risk losing your rings. Your score, maybe your rank, or maybe even your life could be put at risk by just one wrong move. They create such a good sense of tension, and I think that Sonic's slower speed in the rest of the game is fine because it complements the max speed section so well. The vast increase in speed gets the blood pumping. Something I see people complaining about with these sections is once you jump, that's it, you're locked in. From the moment you push that button, your fate is sealed, and this is another hot take I'm about to dish out right here. I kind of like that. It again adds to the tension, it keeps the section feeling like a frantic rush to the end, to know that one wrong move could be your last. I admit, sometimes these sections can feel a little unfair, especially in Crisis City, for example, where they're just throwing everything at you, but I forgive it because the tension you feel throughout is incredible, and if you manage to make it to the end of the section, the end of the stage, without taking any damage, it feels incredible. 
All the environments and settings are fantastic and look incredible for a game released in 2006. I mean, what was this competition? Twilight Princess, Bully, Half-Life 2, fucking Oblivion. Sonic 06 blows all these games out of the water graphically. Shadow Control's pretty much the same as Sonic, except I'm pretty sure he can't bounce or spin dash. His focus is more on combat than Sonic's is. He'll often face waves of enemies and will have to fight them off. You have a few more moves to Sonic, however his stages, to me anyway, aren't as fun to play. They're not bad, they're good, but they're not as good as Sonic's campaign. Shadow also has the opportunity to use different vehicles, like a car with missiles, or this flying thing, or or the, the this floating thing on the water, and yeah, I mean, they're fine. They take the place of the mount speed sections, and they're fine. I'm not a huge fan of these, but 9 times out of 10 they're over fairly quickly and don't really often over say they're welcome. So, it's a nice change of pace from time to time, but it can get annoying in a few occasions. Silver the Hedgehog is my least favourite out of them all. He is unimaginably slow. However, he does have some neat abilities. He can use his telekinesis to pick up objects around the stage and throw them at enemies to defeat them. Which is actually pretty fun, I can't lie. He also can fly using his telekinetic powers for a limited amount of time to clear larger gaps and areas within the stage, which again, is really fun, and can lead to some good player freedom in traversing through a stage, perhaps accessing alternate routes and shortcuts, or maybe unintended pathways across. If there were one way I would describe Silver's gameplay in Sonic 06, it is Sonic 06 Werehog. It's slower than the others, but can have fun movement from time to time, if you know what you're doing. However you want to spin it, his levels can drag on, and 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 on. As well as this, each character has sections in some of their stages where you can play as other playable characters. Well, where you have to play as other playable characters like Tails, Knuckles, Amy, Rouge, and Omega. Sometimes you even play as the other hedgehogs. For example, Silver has a section in Sonic's Kingdom Valley. And honestly, I think this is the best way the series has ever handled multiple characters. They show up and provide variation in gameplay and don't oversay their welcome. They're different enough to provide a break from the normal gameplay and give you something different, but similar enough that you don't need a huge adjustment time to feel comfortable controlling them. Not too much to say here, other than they're executed incredibly. If you want to see someone who knows what they're talking about when it comes to this, watch this video, the link will be in the description. I'm gonna be completely and wholeheartedly honest with you. The boss fights in this game kinda suck. With the exception of Silver's Iblis, they're all fine, Silver's Iblis is awful, but with the exception to that, they all serve their job. Egg Genesis is actually pretty cool. But other than that, they're all a pretty generic waiting game of waiting for an enemy to make themselves vulnerable, you attack, you win. Like I said, none of them are really anything special, none of them are really completely awful. The final boss essentially resorts to mashing X for the majority of the fight, but they're good. It's not great, awesome, outstanding, or amazing. It's good. And most of them look pretty cool, and after this, Shadow kicks Silver in the back of the head, so there's that, I guess. <coughs> Now it's time to get on to everyone's favourite thing to complain about when it comes to this game. The glitches that make it, quote, unplayable. Here we go! They're, they're really not that bad. Sure, they're here and there, which I'll get onto in a second, but removing all of my bias for a second, of which there isn't much because I didn't grow up with the game, the statement saying the game is unplayable or a glitchy mess is simply untrue. It's an unfinished game, everyone knows that, the biggest fan of this game knows that, and they'll admit to it, but it's perfectly playable. It's just lacking polish in a few places. Nine out of ten of the issues are the collision and scripting issues. Not that scripting doesn't work, but rather you can just, well, stand on loops. 
does that make the game unplayable? No, because if you weren't looking for it, you wouldn't find it. But is it with the issue with the game? Yeah, here it is. However, it's really not that bad, like, at, at all. It will in no way affect you unless you go looking for it. However, there is a glitch which I do have an issue with, and this one is an actual problem. Sometimes, when you're climbing a wall as Knuckles or Rouge, you just can't, can't get off. Sometimes it doesn't happen, sometimes you'll jump a few times and you'll get off the wall, other times you might be there five minutes trying to get off, there's no pattern to it, it just happens randomly, and it is a big issue. But again, it's far from making the game unplayable, or making the entire game a glitchy mess. Again, those statements are simply untrue. And where would a Sonic game be without its music? This Do you see this shit, Omega? Shit analyzed and registered. This was the first game in which Tommy Otani was the sound director, and he knocked it out of the park on his first attempt. I'm just going to play sections from a few of my favorite tracks, and I'll see you in a second. So music is the most subjective thing ever, and I don't really have much to say about it because I don't really know what I'm talking about when it comes to music. I just know if I like it or I don't like it. That's it. But watch this video about leitmotifs and Sonic games. Again, the link will be in the description. That will explain all things better than I ever could. That's that. That sums it up. That's the game. It's okay to like it. It's okay not to. These are just the reasons that I like it. The reason I think... It's ever hated. The reason that I think that Sonic the Hedgehog 2006 is better than you think.
Have you ever farted a little too hard and poo-poo comes out of your booty?